Hello and welcome everyone. This is the seventh episode of Mouse Adventure Develop. This week I did some more work on the UI and created a settings window for the game. Along with that I worked on an audio manager to handle the music and the sound effects in the game. For those who are new, Mouse Adventure is a maze crawler puzzle game based on procedurally generated mazes. It takes place in a cartoony world with a light-hearted storyline. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified when a new episode is out. I really appreciate your support. Last week I spent most of my time on graphic design, creating UI elements and creating buttons, windows using these graphics. This week I decided to keep working on the UI and finish one of the missing parts of the main game scene, settings window. Previously, I've already written a settings controller which handles joystick sensitivity and the sound volume, but since controls of the game changed, this needed an upgrade too. I quickly duplicated the end scene window and changed it to contain some sliders for sound value, joystick sensitivity and swipe sensitivity. These were the main float values that I could think of at first. All these sliders were just dummies with no connection to the code at first. Once I believed they looked good enough, I started scripting them into the game. Since I did not have an audio manager, I skipped the audio slider and focused on sensitivity of joystick and swipe. What I noticed in this case was that since joystick was used for walking around and its sensitivity is based on the distance to click center, Adding a sensitivity to it in a limited environment did not make a lot of sense and didn't have an impact. This might be subject to change when played on a large screen tablet, but still I don't think it will be necessary at this point, so I decided to remove it. However, swipe sensitivity made a lot of sense, since it works like mouse sensitivity in a PC game. I set the slider values to range from 0.5 to 1.5, so there is a bottom limit as well. Setting this value sensitivity to minimum value won't cause no swipe at all kind of issues. Next thing was to deal with the audio manager. At first I thought it would take a lot of time to get something proper set, but working with it was quite a lot of fun, so I didn't really mind the time I spent on it at all. For now I decided to work with only a sound effects and music mixer that should take care of the audio in the game. Both of these mixers are connected to a main mixer, and I will change the master audio value from here. So there will not be a separate slider for sound effect and the music volume. This decision I took upon my own experience playing mobile games. I always use the master volume and I don't think the other um, audio values are so important. Of course this is probably a good idea if your game is not heavily based on audio or lots of music explosion or such effects are going on around all the time. When dealing with audio in Unity, one thing I observe is that developers add an audio source component to every object that might cause a clip to be played. And these components are destroyed along with the object when they are done with it. This is a bad practice in game development and I see putting audio sources on objects necessary if only the sound is spatial, meaning it's environmental and fades away when you move away from it. Such audio as music, UI sound effects, even speaking to an NPC if NPCs are only speaking to you when you're, you are nearby them, can be handled from an audio manager from an audio pool. So you can reuse these components and do not uh, cause any overhead when loading the scene. My audio manager uses these principles to simplify the audio management and it adds an audio source to the manager on demand. So overlapping sound effects and music always can be played without muting the another one. All these created components can be reused. This also helped me create smooth transition of music, which helps me avoid the feeling of music shuts when another one starts. Now, when you change an area and that area's music starts playing, I can set a time-based transition from one music to another. This helps the music blend to each other and the main music can blend with the music to another state and this causes smooth feeling. After the audio manager changes, I was able to tie the sound slider to the game and decided adding invert X and Y axis of the swipe control to the settings as well. This would help the players decide how they wanna play while swiping. It's like the invert Y in mouse controls of PC games but in this case I needed another axis as well depending on how comfortable the user feels. 
adding a couple of toggles and using them to negate the input value of the swipe did the trick and it is very useful in my opinion. With all these changes, I'm quite happy with the progress I made this week. Of course, there's a lot still missing from the settings and audio manager. I really wish to add a language controller to the settings and add an environmental audio management support to the audio manager. But it is too early for these changes. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel not to miss the next episode. Take care.